I want the Lord to dwell in me. I want the Lord to dwell what's inside of me. Amen? Is that how you feel today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. As I was listening to the Word of God this morning, I, I heard a scripture in 2 Kings chapter 5, and that's when uh, Naaman of Syria, he was a commander of the army in Syria, he, he was a leper. Uh, and a little servant girl said, there's somebody in Israel that can help you. And uh, so he, the king said, oh yeah, go commander. He's, the king sent the commander to go to Israel. And he went to the king of Israel and said, I heard that you can heal me. And the king got all, the king of Israel got all warped and said, oh man, I can't do this. He's trying to start a fight with me. So then what happened was, is the prophet uh, came and he said, I can, he said, I, I send him to me. So he sent him to him and he said, that he may know there is a prophet in Israel. And I'd just like to say that we need to compel the city of St. Joseph to uh, the church to let them know that there is a church in St. Joe, that there is the kingdom of God in St. Joe. Uh, amen. God's got a kingdom and he's got a branch in St. Joe. Amen. And we need to compel uh, the whole world, especially St. Joseph, uh, to come to be a part of the kingdom of God. Amen. That they may know that there is a God and a, and a, a people in St. Joe. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's all stand together as we receive our pastor to this pulpit at this time. And uh, I just ask that you help him preach today. Amen. Amen. Somebody at work would say, man, it's awful cold outside. You might have said, oh, yeah, amen. You might have agreed pretty strongly with them. But we got somebody uh, that's getting ready to preach some more truth than that. And if it's cold, it's pretty nice outside, amen? amen. Well, we're getting ready to hear a word that's more true than what I just said. And so we ought to get a little bit more of an amen than that, amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's receive our pastor today. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Guess I would just have to count it a double honor to speak to you twice today. So we're, we're blessed, aren't we? Uh, doubly, a lot of different ways. Uh, I'd just like to say that we're happy for everyone that's joined us this afternoon. And, and first and foremost, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We, we need to recognize him as, as the one who is above all. You know, we're, we're not talking about just some image or some painting on a giant billboard somewhere, but we're talking about a living Savior, amen, that is in this room right now. Hallelujah. He's here to meet all of our needs. Uh, uh, we just need to go ahead and let God work in us today. Come on, if the auto mechanic needs to work on the engine, you got to get the hood up. Yeah. Come on, if the surgeon's going to work on your heart, he's got to make an opening. Yeah. Come on, whatever we have to do, we've got to give the Lord some exposure to our spirits today. Come on, not just, uh, I want it to go in this year and out this year. I, I want it to filter down into my soul. I, I, I want to receive what God has for me today. Amen. Amen. Uh, reading a passage of scripture that's in Galatians chapter 6 and 2 verses 7 and 8. <clears throat> Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, I've lived a while in this life to understand a lot of people simply don't believe it. Until it's too late. I've, I've had people to ask the question. How in the world did I ever end up. In this place in my life. Well here's the answer. Here's the answer. It's verse 7 and 8. That. For whatsoever a man soweth. That shall he also reap. Well. 
let me just emphasize that just a little bit here. Uh, use something natural for a spiritual illustration. Is that okay? Uh, say I was going to uh, bring Brother Brian or Brother Nate uh, a tie, and I went to my closet, and I, I said, well, I like that tie, and I like that tie, but that one I don't like. That's probably the ugliest tie that I have. And so I come and I give it to my ugliest ties to these guys. Say, so here, here's the gift for me. Now, I, I probably should expect to get about 100 ugly ties back. Because that's what I'm sowing. That's what I'm sowing. And so we have to be careful what we sow because we're going to reap it. And, and the reaping process, it's not that you're just going to get one for one. Now that, that's the part people miss. Uh, it's the good part when you're doing good things. It's, it's terrible when you're not doing good things. Because you wind up, you, you reap more than you actually sow because that's the law of the harvest. I mean, uh, we just wouldn't make it if we just put one grain of corn in the ground and only got one back. That just wouldn't work. And, uh, and so the principle is that we reap more than we sow. And, that, and that's a very good thing for those that do the right thing. Verse 8, for he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And that's what we want. Everybody say, that's what I want. I want everlasting life. I, I, I want to hear the Lord say, well done. Amen. I, I want to do the right thing. I want, to, I want to do good things. I want to do righteous things. I, I want to do things that brings my life into alignment with the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I, I want to be a blessing because I, I like blessings. Come on. I, I want to do some good things because I like to enjoy good things. Well, it's up to us what we want to do. I've noticed some people, they're, they're just, uh, you know, they're just uh, angry or bitter or sour all the time, and that's what they manifest. Well, that's, that's what they're going to get back. Praise God. Let's pray the Lord speak to us today. Would, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we're in need of you today. We need you to speak into our lives. We need the Holy Ghost, Lord, today to speak. Well, we need your spirit, Lord, to convict. God, we need your spirit to lead and guide men to you. And we're inviting you, Lord, in this house right now, Lord, God, to work in our lives. And God, let those walls be broken down. Help us today, Lord, to make ourselves available to your spirit. God, that we would, Lord, be led of your spirit and mind the things of the spirit. That we would be the benefactors. That we would be blessed. We ask you, Lord, to speak to us this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I read of a British prime minister by the name of William Gladstone. He served four times in this position, and, and uh, he, he served until he was 84 years of age, and he, and he finally resigned for the last time. Uh, the man was a fount of knowledge, and he was one of the premier men of the Victorian age. And his words that he spoke were true in a legal sense, uh, but they were absolutely untrue in a spiritual sense. Did you know that could happen? We'll, we'll try to uh, bring that a little bit forward here in a few moments. But he phrased a, uh, uh, or coined a, a, a phrase here. It was entitled, Justice Delayed is Justice Denied. Uh, in those days, the ideal of a perpetrator or a victim of a crime should have their day in court and that the people of a free society should both expect and deserve immediate justice. But I wonder how many of us would really want immediate justice in the spiritual realm. Justice delayed may be uh, a curse in the legal realm. But in God's world, it's a blessing. Really, for, for you and I today, and I'm talking about us who are in this room today, justice delayed Amen. It can be termed by another word, and, I, and that word is grace. Well, we ought to thank Lord right now for some grace. He's been gracious. Come on. He's been patient. He's been long-suffering to us. Amen. I'm thankful for the grace of God. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 9. 
tells us, For my name's sake I will defer my anger, and for my praise I will restrain it from you, so that I don't cut you off. Come on, the Lord's done that for every one of us in this house today. We ought to lift our hands again and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have deferred your anger. I'm not trying to put anybody or any of us today in the hot seat, but we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Come on, we were born in sin and shaped into iniquity. Amen. We have all done things, amen, that we probably, amen, deserved immediate justice. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad today, amen, that he has granted grace to us. You know, we, we live in a Perry Mason and law and order uh, society which says that, you know, evil can be punished in either a half an hour or an hour episode. We're living in a day where people expect something, you know, just really fast. And it even in terms of justice when it's somebody else. Amen. That, that really that's, that's violated us. And, uh, but uh, there, there's something within the human spirit that just cries out for justice. Hallelujah. But I, I want to preach about justice delayed today. And because we've all experienced justice delayed. In our experiencing it today, I don't know how long justice will be delayed. Amen. But there's something that's in us. Matter of fact, I, I did some reading about justice, and there's all kinds of justice. It's a broad subject. Amen. But there's just something about justice that seems to be built into our DNA. It's in our genes. Amen. It just, just comes so natural to us. Amen. That you know, when we see a, a, a child mistreated, we want to step up and say, hey, 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 hold on here a minute. It's just a natural inborn instinct and reaction. Amen. That's in us. We, we have that built in us. And sometimes when people do evil, amen, we think that the axe ought to fall. Come on. On everybody but us. Hallelujah. I'm thankful today that justice has been delayed. Amen. There's times that we want justice because we feel like we have been wronged and maybe have been. Or when our names have been drugged through the mud without a cause or we feel like we deserve the benefit of the doubt and never got it. Come on. Maybe it's somebody that's posted something on Facebook and had a little insinuation and we didn't like it. <laughs> we want justice. <laughs> We had to put our lives on hold for a while because of what somebody else did. We, we think our futures are hampered because there's something that's just holding us back. I, I, let me just speak to our children today here for a moment. I just feel this in the spirit. Sometimes we, we have children that reach a place in their life. They feel like uh, the, the parents are holding them back. How many we got here today that's under the age of, of 13? We got two, three here in the house today. Well, yeah, there you go. There you go. Let, let me say something about this today. There's going to come a time in your life that you're going to think mom and dad is unfair. Matter of fact, you're probably going to think that they're just not just at all. You're, you're probably going to have some ideals that's going to come up like that. But I want to tell you today, amen, that when mom and dad stands in the way and says, ah, I, I don't think that this is a good ideal for you, they're looking out for your welfare. They're looking out for your good. They're, they're trying to save you a lot of heartache and a lot of problems, amen, that's going to come down the road if you go down that path. And so they're there to be your protectors. They're there to help you. They're there to be your guide. Amen. And if we will follow the pattern that God has given us where our children would honor their mother and their father, amen, then we'll have a much better world to live in. And so don't think because mom and dad, amen, that they're stepping up and saying no at times, amen, that they're against you. They are for you. They love you. They care about you. Amen. They're, they're, they're the greatest people on the face of the earth. Amen. And so uh, I just wanted to say that they're, they're not going to hold you back. They're going to help propel you into a brighter, better future if you will let them. But we cry for justice. Justice is that 
that word that cries out to us and says, I, I want fairness, I want equality, I want impartiality, amen, and, and I want these things and I want them immediately, amen. And the person who was wrong deserves justice, and the person who wrong deserves justice. As a matter of fact, the truth of the matter is that we all deserve justice. But let me say to us that there is one holy, righteous judge who sits on the throne. Amen. And that he will settle the score with all of us one day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad today, amen, that he is a just God. Matter of fact, you know, uh, he tells us, amen, that we are to do justly. We are to love mercy and we are to walk humbly with him. Amen. So it's important for us today to understand a little about bit about this justice because sometimes there's things that we don't see come on those who have wronged you they will receive their just reward those who do wrong they'll receive punishment that's just a fact of life whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap but we feel we deserve immediate justice in this world when i'm talking about delayed Justice here, justice delayed. Amen. We're talking about the grace of God. I say I'm talking about grace, a space called grace here. I'm talking about a time, amen, that God is merciful to us that we can right the wrongs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said... Romans 3, 23, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5 and 12 says, By one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Come on, sin comes with a penalty. James tells us that if we keep the whole law but offend in one point, we are guilty of all. I, I don't really think I want immediate justice. If you would, for a few moments here, let me give you a few illustrations of immediate justice, amen, that happened in the Word of God. There was Nadab and Abihu. These were the two sons of Aaron, who was the high priest, amen, who was working, amen, with his brother Moses. These two brothers... They decided one day that they were going to take uh, some incense and they were going to offer it as worship in the tabernacle. And as they began that process, and that sounded like a good thing to do, but they were not authorized to do it. And as a result of that, the Lord struck them dead and they died right where they were. And it didn't stop there. Matter of fact, you know, uh, the, the word came to Aaron and his family that was told to them, don't weep for them. He did. Don't cry over them. God is bringing forth justice. We, we have to back up and think whether we want immediate justice or not. There was a man by the name Yuza, he was there when the ark was being brought back, amen, to its rightful place with, on a cart drawn by oxen, and it got to a place that it wobbled, and he just reached out and said, oh, no, we don't want this to fall over, and he touched the ark, and he fell down dead immediately. Immediately, he died because he wasn't supposed to touch the ark. See, we operate here in 2014 by motive. Well, why, why was it such harsh judgment? Because he was really doing a good thing. That's a good thing in our minds, but God requires things different. Amen. He wants us to do things according to his plan. And even though it was well intended, amen, he died. Come on, immediate justice is not very attractive. You say, well, that's Old, well, Old Testament. Let me tell you about a couple in the New Testament by the name of Ananias and Sapphira. Come on, they were part of the, of the New Testament church, amen. And, and they, they were there, you know, hearing about the reports that was given of how the 
the Lord was moving on hearts and that they were going and selling land and bringing the money and they were seeing revival take place and they said, you know, we want to get in on this. And so they went and sold some property. Amen. And they brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And the Holy Ghost, amen, quickened the apostle, amen, to ask them, did you sell it for so much? And you know what they did? They lied. And when they lied, there was immediate justice and they fell down dead. Because they said, you haven't lied unto man. You've lied unto God. Come on. If God would take immediate justice on all of us, amen, we wouldn't be here today. Come on. We are living in the grace dispensation. We are living in a time that God has been long-suffering and patient with us. I can't promise you that it's going to extend another 24 hours. But I'm telling you, you got some grace right now. Hallelujah. They died. Moses heard God's voice saying, The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. And that's true. God's glory is seen in justice delayed. In grace. Grace is this interval of time in which God can lean up lead a person away from his wrongness and his evil to a place of repentance and turning away from it. That's the only hope that mankind has. Now, let me say that again. We're talking about an interval from the time that a man or a woman has committed a transgression against God that is punishable by death. Now, oh, I know a lot of us, we don't feel like we're under any death penalty, but every sinner is under the death penalty. Every sinner is under the death penalty. God told Adam, and even the day that you eat thereof, you're going to die. Now, we know that they didn't die that instant or we wouldn't be here. It was a little delayed, but it did happen. And that's what people are doing. They, they are stacking up their, their bet that they're going to make it further down the road than perhaps what they think they will. I, I, I challenge you today, don't, don't gamble with God. Don't gamble with God. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 18 and 4 says, Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. We all belong to God, and He values us, and He values what we do, amen, with what He has given us. And it is not His will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He understands that we were born with this nature and propensity towards sin, and that we were going to uh, have places in our life where we were going to lie. We're going to steal. We were going to bear false witness. Come on. We were going to do things that we ought not to do. Matter of fact, you know, we, get, we were born in this world with the same Ten Commandments that Moses had. They're still in effect. Well, let, let me remind us today. Hey, man. If we choose to sin, we commit moral treason. And remember, the penalty of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as we go through the scripture, we read in the book of Numbers and Leviticus and Exodus and Deuteronomy. When you read these passages of scripture, you will find that when a person murdered somebody, they should die. Come on, if they kidnapped somebody, they should die. If they raped somebody, they were to die. If they were to strike their parents, they were to die or curse them. If they offered imperfect sacrifice, worship that is sloppy, they should die. If they took the name of the Lord in vain, they should die. If they break the Sabbath day, they were to die. And if they were to give a false prophecy, they were to die. If they were to commit adultery, they were to die. Amen. And and. It was just things that happened that when you disagreed with God, he had the right 
to take you out. And he still reserves the right. We're gambling on the fact that he's not going to do it for a while. Let's don't be so sure about that. I'll tell you what we need to be sure of is that that day will come. And we don't need to wait another day. We need to take care of whatever's wrong in our life right here, right now. Come on. And so it goes on. Now I might ask you the question today, when was the last time you saw somebody drop dead after they, they were cursing the Lord? Well, it's, you probably didn't see that. You know why? Because God is gracious. Come on, you've been gracious to me. And he's been gracious to you. And he's been gracious to, to tens of thousands and millions of others. Amen. Because he wants to give them an opportunity, amen, to turn to him and to call upon him. It's the long suffering of God. God waited a long time before he destroyed the cities of God, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And he would have even spared them if there would have been ten that would have made things right with him. He was a long time and before he ever destroyed the earth with a flood. Matter of fact, one of the longest sermons ever preached lasted about 100 years. Noah preached it. But the day came. The door was closed. The rains came. Judgment prevailed. Amen. And every soul that wasn't on the ark, amen, they lost. Come on, the wheels of God's justice, they may work slowly, but they certainly work. It's just that delayed justice is consistent with God's character. I mentioned earlier in class today of the woman who they brought and laid in the dust and says the law says stoner. They would have been within their rights to do it. But Jesus said, I, I've come to give a little space here. You that are without sin, you cast the first stone. Well, we need to see where we've been. We need to remember the pit from which we were dug. We, we, we need to be reminded sometimes of our past, amen, where we can appreciate our present and our future. It's like the the prodigal son who come rushing back to his father and, and said, oh, father, I'm so sorry. And, and the father said, oh, 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 oh son, it's not what you deserve. It's what I want to bestow on you. And what the Lord is saying to us today, it's not what we deserve. We are experiencing the unmerited favor of God. Come on, there's nothing that we can do, amen, to say, amen, that God owes me anything. He's never owed me anything. He never will owe me anything. I owe him everything, and I am indebted to him today. Hallelujah. Oh, what manner of love that he has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Come on, it's not about what we deserve. It's about what he chose to give to us. He didn't, he didn't give us what we deserved. He gave us what we needed. We needed to be forgiven. And he forgave us. We needed our sins remitted under the blood of Jesus. And thus we had a privilege to be buried with him in the waters of baptism. We needed a life-changing experience. That's the reason he gave us the Holy Ghost that's empowered us. read about a love story between two feuding London preachers of the 19th century, Charles Spurgeon and Joseph Parker. Someone told Spurgeon that Parker had criticized Spurgeon's orphanage. He had a child orphanage. And when in actuality, Parker had only mentioned about the poverty and the sickness of the children before they came to Spurgeon's orphanage. And so Spurgeon... <coughs> Blasted Parker the next week at, from his pulpit. And the attack was printed in the London newspaper. And so the next Sunday, the press was gathered at Parker's church to see if there was going to be a response. Parker got up 
and said that I understand that Pastor Spurgeon is unable to preach in his pulpit today. And since this is the Sunday that he normally receives an offering for the orphanage, I think it would be a good ideal if our church did it. He said, I suggest that we do it. He said that they had the ushers to come, and the crowd was delighted. Amen. And the ushers had to empty their collection plates three times before they ever finished the offering. Days later, Spurgeon, after he had recovered from his sickness, he knocked on the door of Parker's study. He said, Pastor Parker, you practice grace on me. You didn't give me what I deserve, <laughs> but you gave me what I needed. Come on, we all, we all deserve immediate justice. But what we need is delayed justice. We need grace. I say we need grace. Yes. Hallelujah. When Elizabeth I became Queen of England in 1558, her ascension marked a bitter time in the British and religious history. The country was reeling over religious controversies, and, and there was a pro Catholic woman dressed as a male page who hid in the Queen's bedroom. In her hand, she held a knife, and she indeed intended to kill the queen. But the queen's attendants discovered her and captured her. Later, she was brought before the queen, <clears throat> this would-be assassin, and she fell down on her knees and pleaded with the queen to have compassion on her. And the queen replied, If I show you grace, what promise will you make for the future? The woman on the floor responded and said, Your Highness, if grace is fettered with such precautions, it's not grace at all. The queen thought for a moment and said, You're right. I pardon you of my grace. And before the woman was led away, the woman crawled to the queen's feet and she said, I'll be your slave forever. And history bears out that this literally happened Hey, bad that she lived up to her word. Hey, bad because of the grace that was bestowed upon her. I wonder today how many of us is willing to become a love slave to Jesus Christ because of the love that He has bestowed upon us. Oh, we are indebted to Him. Come on, grace is not just some commodity, amen, the amen that you pick up at the grocery store. Oh, grace is amazing. And I believe in this house today that there perhaps is someone who would say, I've been wrong. Let me assure you, one day it will be made right. Ecclesiastes 8. 12 through 13 says, Though a sinner does evil a hundred times, and his days are prolonged, yet I surely know that it would be well with those who fear God, who fear before Him. But it is not well with the wicked, nor will he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he does not fear the Lord. If we would fear God and keep His commandments, folks, that puts us in a good place with God. But when a man does not regard God and, and doesn't fear Him, he's just spread over a thin place right over the mouth of hell. And it is only God's goodness that keeps him from falling into the pit. How long has it been since we felt like we could be lost? Somehow we've got this driven in our brains. I got saved and that's all I have to do. Let me tell you, folks, I'm still working on my salvation. I, I, I can't earn it. I can't earn it. But I'm working on pleasing my God. I'm working on honoring Him. I'm working on hey, all that I can to please Him with everything that I have. Just recently there was an article... 
on the internet, I believe it was, about a, a man that had served about 30 years of prison and uh, was on death row, and he got released just a few days ago because uh, the modern technology of, of uh, what they have with these crime scenes and so forth proved that he wasn't the guilty person. Woo! Yeah. Whoa! Woo! I'm sure he felt good when he walked out there. He wasn't guilty, but he had to pay the price. It wasn't right. It was an injustice. But you know what? God always settles the score one way or another. That person who really was guilty is going to have to pay somewhere. Hallelujah. I'm glad that whom the Son has set free, they're free indeed. <laughs> Well, we have to admit we were all guilty before God, but He's pardoned us. And so we don't have to live that way anymore. Come on, He's shown His grace to us. He's showered it up on us. So let me encourage you today. Delay your judgment. Withhold your criticism. Put your sword back in your seat. God said, for my name's sake, I'll do this. I, I don't want to cut you off, but I will. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some time to work on it. We don't know how long that is. And that's really where we are today. For all of us have done things worthy of immediate justice. But he's deferred it. He's pardoned us. I'm closing today, because I feel like somebody needs to respond to the moment. Well, there, there's, there's a space here called grace. In the Revolutionary War, there was a Baptist preacher named Peter Miller. He had a personal acquaintance with George Washington, general at the time. A man by the name of Michael Whitmore made the pastor's life just miserable. He did everything that he could to persecute and abuse the pastor. It just so happened that Whitman was arrested for treason and sentenced to death. The old preacher heard the news and he started out on foot and he walked 70 miles to Philadelphia. Some probably thought he was coming there to watch the hanging. But when the preacher got to Philadelphia, he went to General George Washington and pleaded for the man's life and Washington said, Preacher, I, I can't grant you the life of your friend. The preacher replied, friend? He's my worst enemy. Washington said, well, that changes everything. He said, you've walked 70 miles to ask for the life of your enemy? Washington said, I'll grant the pardon. The preacher walked with his enemy back home. But as they were walking, they became friends. Justice was delayed and purchased a friend. Love keep no records of wrongs. we ask God to help us to, today? I, I just feel such a strong current of the Spirit today that we need to come to repentance. Can we stand together today? Maybe some would like to make their way to a place of prayer. Maybe you'd like to come stand here today. But God's been too good to me. For me not to take another moment today and say, God, forgive me. I want to walk out of this building today with clean hands and pure heart. I want to leave this sanctuary today having emptied everything out before God. I, I don't want to get on that highway or byway and take a risk of going into eternity without knowing that I've been forgiven 
and everything is well with my soul. And so I'm asking you today, I, I, I'm asking that you would come today in this period called grace and you'd ask the Lord today, amen, to bring forgiveness into your life. I'm going to join you today. I, I just stand in all at God's grace. I, I stand at all in His long suffering. I don't deserve it. I can't earn it. But I can receive it today. And so can you. Anyone that would ask Him today, I believe He's waiting for somebody to call His name. I believe He's waiting for somebody just to say, God, I'm sorry. And be honest from your heart of all these things that I've done, God. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive my iniquity. Wash me, O oh God. Cleanse me, Lord. Sanctify me. Come on, there's, there's an important element here today in this service. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Would you come to Him today? Cast all your cares on Him. Say, thank you, Lord, that you've been patient with me. Lord, there's some things I need to work out in my life. And God, you know what's going on in my life. I want to get it right with you, God. I want to be saved. I need your help. Come on, church, let's pray. Find somebody to pray with. Come on, we, we need to have a prayer meeting here today. Come on, we need to touch heaven today. Oh, we need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Oh, help us today. Help me, Jesus. Come on, call on him. Hallelujah. like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace my fear relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood His mercy reigns unending love Amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. My word, my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long.
shall soon dissolve thy soul. The sun forbid to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. Dark God, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. My chains are There's absolutely nothing more important for us today than to take advantage of this little space called grace. Well, it's more important than you having dinner this afternoon. Far more important. Far more important. I, I think we ought to just take another moment here today and ask the Lord to just show us who we are what kind of person we are. Sometimes we think more of ourselves than we ought to. Can we just bow our heads for a moment and just talk to God? And say, God, search me. Lord, you know the thoughts that's been going through my mind. You know, Lord, what's been, Lord, my actions, my deeds. You know all about me, God. And Lord, if there's something here that displeases you, Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to take out that, that ugliness, that bad attitude, that anger, that bitterness, that criticism. Lord, whatever you find, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to help me to be empty of it. Lord, I don't want any unclean thing to dwell in my life. Lord, I need you today. I need you. I need you, Jesus. You know, I, I wouldn't be embarrassed today if somebody was just to cry out to God. It's not that I'm asking you to do that. But it would be in order for somebody to cry out to God. Oh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. It's appropriate. You're in the right place at the right time. God wants to hear our cries today. Come on, don't let the enemy defeat you. We're too close to home. We're too close. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. I was thinking this last week about the coming of the Lord, and I believe the coming of the Lord is at hand. I, I believe that the, the church is going to be taken out of the earth. I believe that. I believe the dead in Christ is going to rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be called up to meet Him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. But I got to make sure all is well with my life. You got to make sure everything's well with your life. Not one thing. 
I thought of the horror of those that's going to have to stand before God and give account. Such a horror. Horror of horrors. We think hell is just reserved for mad men. Hell was originally designed for the devil and his angels. But the Lord tells us that we will go there. That we will go there if we are not willing. If we're not willing to receive the grace of God into our life. Got to work every day. Did work just on Christmas and Easter. Did work every day. I love you. I want you to be saved. You should be saved. Hallelujah. Stay with us again today. I'd like to say a special thanks to Brother Felzine who's helped us today. Sister Lyle and Sister Hux is sick today. I think we ought to pray for them as we come to a close today. But uh, appreciate our music team stepping up and helping us today. Amen. We're glad for all of you today. Why don't we go forward, amen, and be all that we can be for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come pray over us, Brother Brandon. I needed to make an announcement. After we dismiss here, Sister Billingsley is going to have somebody to help her. We're going to display some special crocheted projects here that uh, we're going to be taking bids on. And so uh, take a look at it before you leave. Would you do that? Sister Brenda. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the service today. We thank you for the word, Jesus, that you've placed within our hands, God. We thank you for the word, Jesus, that you've spoken into our ears we thank you, Jesus, for every part, God, of, of the things that you're doing in our lives, God. And we want to have a heart that's open and fully, fully extended to you, Jesus. Lord, we ask that your will would be so clear to us, Lord, that you'd sit upon our shoulders and whisper into our ears the things of godliness, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord, to be the people that you desire us to be, God. Help us to get everything out of our hearts and our minds and our spirits, Lord, that hinder or come between you and us, Lord Jesus. We pray that your perfect will would be upon these people, God. Bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Also, don't forget the bookmarks that's available in the back. Brother Andre's got available to help fund our outreach. And uh, these gentlemen's going to display these here for a moment for you to take a look at if you'd like to make a bid on them. I just want to let you know we're taking bids on these. Sister Lisa Swope made these and donated them to the church. Revival cost us a price. We have to fast and pray, but it also cost us money for revival. And the money that we raise on these is going to go to the cost of the upcoming healing and deliverance outreach that we have. And we're going to be accepting bids sealed in an envelope until March the 31st. And the bids would start at $40. If you want to bid, seal it in an envelope. 
get it to me before March the 31st. Um, this is yellow. If you want to bid on this one, this is yellow rose. If you want to bid on this one, it's red rose. If you want to bid on this one, it's a uh, orange rose. And this one is a uh, hodgepodge. <laughs> okay, thank you. Put it on a piece of paper in an envelope and hand it to me, please, before the 31st of March. 